What's up, beautiful jellyfish? It's Tracy. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to do the hangout with me. I really appreciate it. I feel like I don't sound 100% for two reasons. The first off, it is 6.40 in the morning on a Saturday, and it is, Paul is also sleeping. Um, so basically, I have been falling asleep really, really early. I had a really, really early night last night, or wild Friday night, and truly, you know, falling asleep, like, 8 30 p.m truly so anyways i am like fully rested and like ready to go but like i don't sound like we're at that full level of energy yet i do have the cats in here with me as well so we're just hanging out and vibing i also do apologize that my last week's video was a little late i was feeling under the weather um i was taking some medicine and i was feeling really really dizzy i was like dizzy for like three days side effects i'm pretty sure the antibiotics it was enough time let me just tell you right now feeling dizzy is for extended periods of time was just like any bit of movement it was like dizziness it was super not fun anyways but we're better now which is great so today we are talking about l drain we're talking about og l drain throat of l drain in this video and basically we are talking about my personal favorite top 10 cards of the set. We're not talking about these cards like these are the best cards in the set. We're not talking about them like Oko, for example, is like not on this list. I don't really play with Planeswalkers. That's why I do think Oko is very cool. And if I had one, I would probably play with it. It's just we don't have an extra one. I also think they're really expensive. So there you go. So we are talking about my personal favorite Throne of Eldraine cards in this video, um, and I love Throne of Eldraine. I have loved Throne of Eldraine since the origins of it, and I just think that this set is so incredibly cool. I think the art style is cool. The, like, I forgot what they're called, but, like, the special borders that they did, so incredibly awesome. I think the set is so cool. These are just my top 10 favorite cards with it, cards that I play with and all that stuff. Um, but let's just jump into it. The first card is, and oh, by the way, I also want to say that this is in order. And what I mean by that is like, it goes from like my least to like my favorite. And when I say least, that's just like, that makes it sound bad. That's like, that's not, that's not how it is. You know, I like all these cards. Okay. Coming in at number 10, I have Linden, the Steadfast Queen. I have wanted to play with Linden for so long, and I actually picked her up in a trade. She's not very expensive, but I got her in like a trade a really long time ago, and she just hasn't found a use in any of my commander decks because um, I first put her in for... Um, my Marchesa deck because my Marchesa deck is all like royalty themed and I decided to take her out for two reasons. The first is she's a queen, Marchesa is a queen, and she is the queen. I couldn't have another queen in Marchesa's court. That just didn't make sense. My Marchesa deck is a very thematic, so there's a reason for that. The second reason is that she says whenever a white creature you control attacks. Now my Marchesa deck is like predominantly white, but I do have other creatures in there, so I don't feel like it totally like fit. However, I really want to play with Linden. I just feel like there's got to be something that I can build that I can throw her in there because I just think she's so incredibly cool. I really like her design and her art is absolutely stunning. So. 10th is Linden. Coming in at number 9 is Heraldic Banner. This is a really awesome um, card for like, particularly I would say monocolor decks for like two color decks where you have um, creatures, um, many creatures, and that you have a lot that are like of the same color. I actually run this card in a three color deck, which is my Alila deck, because most of the fairies that I make off of um, Alila are blue, so I play, I'm pretty sure it's blue. Um, so I have Heraldic Banner in there for that reason, and then I will choose blue, so that way my fairies can get a little bit of a buff. It also triggers off Alila, which is totally perfect, and it taps to add that mana, which I really like. I like that this card is versatile, which I like. It does not synergize with Bitter Blossom, but that's like one card in the deck, so my fairies won't get a buff from that. But that's totally fine by me. I really like Heraldic, Heraldic Banner. I think if you're playing a really creature heavy deck with a lot of things, I don't know why my stomach is growling. This needs to relax. Um, but, anyways, I really like this card. I think it's really cool. It's also very, very inexpensive, which we like. So, okay. This card is absolutely hilarious, and I'm so glad that I get the chance to play with it with it. And that is Crashing Drawbridge. So <clears throat> When I was building Marchesa, it's very thematic, as I mentioned previously, and I remember I was like, when I was looking for cards for this, this card came up, and I was like, I have to run this in Marchesa. This card's actually 
pretty good. Um, it, it's one of those cards that like I'm running for more thematic reasons than I am because I think that the card is incredibly strong, but I actually think that this card is really not that bad because I'm able to have all my creatures have haste. Now, Marchese already has haste, which is really, really awesome, but then I'm able to have my other creatures and I'm also able to give them haste, and I don't really have other ways of doing that, so Crashing Drawbridge is my answer. On top of that, it's also an 0-4, so let's just say I need this as a blocker and I don't need to use it for the effect. I can also have my um, blocker and my defender to protect it a little bit, so I think it's really cool i think it's really fun i like it okay this card has kind of a fun story and that is um rankle master of pranks so for the longest time rankle was really 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 expensive and i was super bummed about that because i had had this card on my list for ever for my um mugus god of slaughter deck because it's a sacrifice theme deck um and i was um really really bummed because it was always really expensive and i was never just gonna buy it because like the foil was just so much and then it got a reprint i forgot when it got a reprint oh it got a reprint and i ended up picking it up i ended up picking the foil up for maybe like a dollar or maybe like two dollars or so which is really really awesome and i don't think i've actually drawn Hi. I don't think I've actually drawn the Zelda. I don't think I've actually drawn this card since I've um, played Mugus. I feel like I actually haven't played Magic in, I haven't played Magic actually since I'm filming this in a really long time. So hopefully the next time I play Mugus, I will draw this card because I think it's really, really cool. I like the versatility. Um, the primary reason I wanted to put it in there was because each player sacks a creature. I don't mind myself personally sacking creatures in the deck because I have like tokens and then I have other things to sacrifice that I don't necessarily mind. Um, however, I do think that the each player discards a card is also not a bad option, especially if I know my what my opponents have in their hands. Um, probably won't be doing the each player lose one life drawing cards because I'm not nice and I don't want my opponents drawing cards. So there you go. Next up we have Ayara. Ayara is so cool. I think she's awesome. I also have her in that Mugus build for a lot of different reasons. I like Ayara because she, every time you have another black creature enter, each opponent loses when you gain one, which I do have quite a bit of ways of, you know, generating creatures, and then I can get that off a lot with Ayara. Also, I'm like recasting a lot of my creatures, there's like some great red recursion in that deck, so I'm able to like recast creatures and have my opponents lose life, which I really like, and I also gain life out of it, which I really, really like. Um, and it's also black creatures, and I do have some red creatures in Mugus, but the deck is primarily black. And then I can tap her to sack another black creature to draw a card, which I absolutely love because it does two things that I want. I have the things that I have in there to sacrifice are either like tokens or cards that I don't necessarily mind going to the graveyard because there's a chance that I could recur them later or it's okay that they're in the graveyard. Um, so I like that. And on top of that, I get to draw a card, which you guys know, it's my favorite thing to do in magic. So absolutely love that. I think Ayara is so incredibly cool. Okay, next up, I love this card. I'm being so genuine when I say that I think this card is good and I really like it, and that is Trapped in a Tower. So we've been talking about Marchesa a lot in this video, and I also have Trapped in a Tower in there because theme. Are there better cards objectively than Trapped in a Tower? Sure, but theme. So it is, like, there's nothing more satisfying than, like, someone playing their big thing and then you being, like, hey, that's a really nice 10-10, guess what? It's trapped in a tower, um, which is just absolutely funny. Now, you can't do creatures with flying, however, you can do other creatures that are super big and that are super threatening, um, and they that creature can't attack, can't block, and its activated abilities cannot be activated. Um, there's just a ton of targets with this, ton of things that you'd want to do. The art is also stunning. I, I just think it's so funny. There's just nothing better than being like, hey, that's a nice 10 you have. Now it's trapped in a tower. There's just, you haven't lived until you've done that. It's very fun. I like it. Okay. Next up, we have Charming Prince. I also have this in Marchesa. And I like the versatility a lot in Charming Prince. And I find that cards, I, I really like it when cards are able to do multiple things. I feel like I... Um, that's something that I really look out for when I'm deck building and when I'm looking at cards that I want to play. I really like cards like this. So ETBs you choose one, scry to gain three life, or you get to um, blink a creature. I do have a couple of things in um, Marchesa that benefit from being blinked. So I think that that is really, really cool. Um, I like that versatility a lot. I would say I've 
only drawn this card a handful of times and I feel like I've either done the gain life or the um gain life because I've absolutely needed to um or then the the um exile and then return a creature that you have um so I think that is super cool I like charming prince oh my gosh next up we have mirror maid I love mirror maid I think this card is absolutely incredible um I remember seeing this card and being like, I absolutely need this card, and I and I and I have picked this up. Um, I have this in Alila because I have what I like about this card a lot is that it's artifact or enchantment. And my so Alila builds are interesting because you either see kind of like I would say three different things. The first you see is like enchantment heavy, the second you see is artifact heavy, and the third is like a hybrid of those two. That's my Alila build because I don't think like there was just too many good enchantments artifacts to run for me i just really wanted to run both and that's what i do in my build and i like that mirror maid can capitalize off of that now it's on the battlefield so let's just say that my targets are not the best thing the fact that i'm able to play mirror maid and make it a copy of anybody's thing on the field i just think is absolutely incredible it's three mana it does its thing it's a great card i love it i love it i love it okay then we have fabled passage i believe fabled passage was like the first time that this card was printed because i know it's been printed in a couple of things but i'm pretty sure it's the first that this card has been um has been printed in i love fabled passage i think that this card is absolutely wonderful i picked up a bunch of the like promo ones um for very very inexpensive and yes i picked up the um this card's also not very expensive so if you're like looking for lands to like boost to your deck i would definitely recommend picking this up because you can get this for about like four dollars you can also get the wpn and gateway promo for four dollars so you can get the foil version of this card which is really really cool um and i picked up a bunch of this like i have this card in absolutely everything it's awesome it's a great card um i i've i've really found that i don't run a ton of like specialty lands in my decks i would say probably like about maybe like a third of my decks are specialty lands and the rest are basics because i just find that like there are times that i'm in a situation where i have a specialty land and then it like taps for colorless when i need it to tap for a color or any or something like that so these days i just lean more towards basics than anything um but anyways field passage is one of those cards that i one of those non-basics that i do run so to me it's like if i'm running a card that's like a specialty land like i really enjoy it and i definitely enjoy fabled passage so you sack it of course and you tutor for a basic you put it on the battlefield tap then show for your library but if you control four or more lands you get to untap it which is like really easy to do card kind of works at different points of the game it's a little slower obviously if you have it in the early stages of the game but i like that if you have four or more lands it doesn't tap. so i like it fable passage it's a great card okay now let's talk about our honorable mention and our honorable mention is basically like most of the time it's for art let's just say that i was making this list and i had like 11 cards that i wanted to talk about i couldn't figure out how to cut one or most of the time it's for art um because i find the art in the set absolutely incredible and I had a kind of hard time picking because there's so much good art in this set, but I think I went back to this card and I was like, she's just so stunning. And that is Glass Casket. I don't know what world I would run this card in. Like, I just don't. Um, but I just think that is absolutely stunning. I have talked about like the possibility. One of my friends had suggested like doing a cube and I was like, I'd love to make a cube. And I've talked about this for so many years where I'd love to do one where like the cards are just really inexpensive. Um, so I could do like a pop or not a popper. Is it peasant cube, which means commons and uncommons. And then my, my goal would be like that the foils would be like under a dollar. So I'm not spending like a ton of money and I get a lot of fun stuff in trades too. If I did, Glass Casket would be in there for sure. Um, I just think that this art is absolutely so incredibly stunning. It looks like a little fox. Sorry, you can hear a cat. She thinks it's breakfast. It's it's not breakfast. Anyone else's pet struggling with daylight savings time? Still, still. Anyways, I think it's a fox in there. It's super cute. Obviously a reference to um, Snow White. Um, but instead of snow white being in there we got a little fox which is so cute and the roses in this they're just absolutely stunning it's just so pretty but i'd really like to know what art you find really pretty in this set um there's a lot okay 
net now coming in at my number one card my favorite card in the set is all that glitters and i will say when when i originally built alila my thing with alila was like making artifacts and making enchantments and making fairies to trigger off of her i'm not trying to do mass voltron in alila however um my friend brad has alila too and was also like hey i think that you should put all that glitters in there i think it's a good option for you and um it would be a good card like to boost alila a little bit and sorry it's all the, this is what it's like to live with cats um but he's like i think you should put it in there because you have so many and it's a good way to like kill people with alila it's not my always go to strategy and i'm not really avidly going out of my way like there are times where like i'll tutor and like i will grab all that glitters it's not my always win condition and i find that it's important to have multiple win conditions and all that glitters is one of my alternate alternate win conditions in that deck it's a great card if you're playing artifacts and enchantments i like a lot of them i think you just absolutely need all that glitters to buff your commander um yeah it's just such a great card and then i find too like with alila that she gets really big and so it, you're really capitalizing off of this card which i just think is incredible um and yeah it's a great great card so anyways guys that is it for my throne of eldraine list i'd really like to know what cards you really love in throne of eldraine if you want to make your list like i've made mine like my top 10 on a roll mention you could do that or you could just let me know your favorite cards that you really like in throne of eldraine so that is it for this video if you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel if you're not already and i'll catch you all in the next one